Macamagab, everybody. Here we go. Another one of these Bands I Met episode. This is part six. And let's get this started. First one is uh, Gary Barden from uh, MSG, Michael Schenker Group. Uh, this picture was taken when I drove to um, Tampa because I have never seen Michael Schenker. He was always a, a bucket list. And I got to see a really cool show. It was, uh, it was the um, Michael Schenker Fest where he had all the singers there, Grand Bonnet. Gary Barden, just a host, a plethora, and a lot of musicians too. Didn't meet a lot of them that day. I tried. I tried to meet Michael Schenker. No luck. But I did meet a couple of them, and Gary Barden was one of them, and he was super cool. All right, next, uh, Gary Holtz again. I know I've met, I mentioned him in a previous episode. I believe this was the show where they played with Sepultura. I could be wrong. This was what, when Rob Dukes was in the band. Anyway, Gary Holt. I got. I got to bring this up. Gary Holt. I met him back in the '80s, and he was a prick. I mean, seriously, I met him three times, and all three times he was a prick. And the third time I met him was like, I. I I'm amazed I wanted to meet him after that. But the third time I met him back in the '80s. You know, I had all these CDs for him to sign. Like he knows I'm a fan, right? He walks in, he comes back out with a handful of guitar picks, and he gave every single one of them to this dude standing there. And I was like, man, I even said, hey, can I get one? He goes, no, it's for him. And he had a handful. What a prick. But then when I met him here and every time afterwards, he was the nicest guy, real cool dude. He was just a prick in the 80s, at least to me. All right, next, Gary Howey. Uh, great guitar player. I met him at uh, one of these, uh, what do they call that thing where, you know, you pay and you get to play with the band, rock and roll camp or something like that. I wasn't part of the rock and roll camp, but they had a free show at the Hard Rock. And I went and he was one of the people I met there that day. I met a lot of people that day. But Gary Hoey, super nice guy. All right, next, Gene Simmons of Kiss. This is when um, I went to the Gene Simmons vault and I met him and uh, and when I took a picture with him, he stuck his tongue out, which was cool. And he was a very nice guy, even though he is a prick. Uh, hey, I paid him a lot of money, so. Oh, and by the way, there are people that have left messages before, comments before going, I would never pay for a meet and greet. My shit don't stink. I don't give a fuck. I do. I pay. Alright? And I don't, I don't pay all the time. I mean, a couple times I won't do it. But a couple times I did do it. And I don't mind. And Ace Fraley was there. And the experience of that whole day was awesome. The ball sucks though, by the way. You know. 11 CDs that you could probably make a, a, a decent EP out of the good songs out of all of them. But anyway, there you go. Gene Simmons of Kiss. And you know, the funny thing is when I met him and he came out and he saw me, the first thing he said when he saw me, he said, well, who do we got here? And I was like, uh-oh. You know, I was like, maybe he's seen my YouTube videos where I'm bashing him relentlessly over the Gene Simmons solo album and all the hypocrisy that spews out of that mouth. But anyway, Gene Simmons. All right, next. Jeff Tate of Queensryche. Uh, I was seeing a girl that was part of the um, fan club. And back then, I mean, you didn't need no meeting. Uh, it was a meet and greet, but it didn't cost anything except being a fan club member. And she was allowed to take a friend. And, uh, and she got me that shirt I'm wearing there, which is a fan club shirt, digital, screaming in digital. And man, Jeff Tate was so nice that day and when I had him sign my Rage for Order album he was like oh this is a first pressing because the background is like a marble cover and he said the record company changed it to black because it was hard to read and super nice guy man Jeff Tate I know he's got a reputation of being a prick but this he was really cool that day you know who wasn't cool is Chris DeGarmo he was a prick and that was right before he left the band this was the Here and Now Frontier Tour. 
Anyway, Jeff Tate. All right, next, Chris Glenn from uh, Michael Schenker Group. This was taken the same day that uh, I met uh, Gary earlier at the Michael Schenker Fest. He was hanging out, sitting down. I sat down with him, talked to him for a little bit, and snapped this picture. Super nice guy. Next, oh yeah, Graham Bonnet. And next to Graham Bonnet is uh, Dave the Beast Spitz who's a good friend of mine. He's on my phone. Can you believe I have somebody that was in Black Sabbath on my phone? How amazing is that? He lives down here. We're buddies, man. We hang out at shows. He's a great, great dude. I interviewed him, and it's on this channel, so check it out. And he was in a band with Graham Bonnet uh, called Impelitary, uh, Chris Impelitary, the guitar player. And... Um, you know, we're hanging out, and then, you know, he got backstage, and he took me along with him. And Grant Bonnet couldn't have been cooler, signed all my stuff, told me his favorite Alcatraz album was the one with Steve I. And, uh, yeah, man. Grant Bonnet, and he still had that killer, killer voice. All right, next. Let's see if I can pronounce this dude's name right. He's the guy that's singing for Great White now, Brett. Carlissel, Car, Carlissel. I don't know. Uh, we in me and me in there. That's Ian in the picture. We interviewed him in Nashville, and we snapped this picture with him. Super nice guy, young kid. Wasn't around when I heard the first uh, Great White album, and I told him straight up, dude. I'm not a fan of Great White except that first album rules, and he agreed. He said, "Oh." I love that first Great White album. Nice kid, man. He was all right. All right, next. Uh, at Rock and Pot as well, Greg Bissonette from the David Lee Roth Band and, uh, and Ringo Starr. And we interviewed him in Nashville as well. And boy, can that guy talk. And I told him, man, I saw you. I saw David Lee Roth Band at the Hollywood Sportatorium in Florida. He's like, I remember that place. It was surrounded by woods. I was like, God damn, he's got a good memory. Greg Bissonette, awesome dude. All right, next. This is um, Firewind. Uh, they were rehearsing at a place I record at, a recording studio I record at, and they were playing a cruise, and they were there rehearsing uh, the same day I finished recording. I was just hanging out, and they came in. Nice guys, especially Gus G, who was in... Who was in a uh, Aussie man? Super nice guy. It was awesome meeting him. And next, uh, this guy's a comedian, Hal Sparks. Anybody remember this guy? I remember this guy used to be on um, uh, VH1 shows and shit, interviewing. He was like a talking head. Uh, yeah, he was at some show I played at. And um, yeah, met him, took this picture. All right, next. Oh, man. Hank Sherman, man, from my favorite band of all time, along with Black Sabbath. Merciful Fate, man. This was on the Nine Tour up in St. Augustine. I drove all the way up there with some friends because I love Merciful Fate so much. And I got to meet Hank Sherman after the show, had him sign my EP. As you see, I'm holding the EP there. And, man, what a great dude. And it was so nice meeting him. And very nice guy. Very, very nice guy. All right, so that does it for part six of Bands I Met. Tune in next month when I have part seven up. I still got many, many more episodes to go. So thank you all for watching, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Ring that little notification bell. And if you met anybody that I'm showing you in this video, leave your comments below. What was your experience with them? I'd like to know and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and ring that little notification bell I would totally totally appreciate that and like the video it's good for the YouTube algorithms so stay frosty listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a cop